Hey, it's Nick with ProgramPractical.com coming to you today with a uh, video on linked list. Uh, this is actually HackerRank.com's Day 15 challenge going on about uh, linked lists. Now, you know what is a, a linked? And essentially, a linked list is a class uh, or an object that essentially has your data type and then an integer to the location in memory to the next data type. Um, and that's actually called a pointer. Um, in this example, it's actually uh, C++ being shown. Where I was exposed to them were in C and C++ because in these types of languages, um, memory has to be allocated. So when you make an array, you have to say, I want an array for this object and uh, you need to define well, how many objects need to be there because the memory has to be allocated for the object. Mm -hmm. When you're learning programming, a lot of them will have you um, make a, a linked list class. And what a linked list does, it just allows you to essentially have a dynamic array. So you'd have your initial object with your data value and then a pointer to your next one. This one has clearly just one object, so it doesn't have anything, but you get to something like you know, this three or four, where you have your data um, and its value, and then a pointer that points you to where the next object is in memory. And then that one has a pointer to where the next one is, which that has nil, which tell you can tell your algorithm means, hey, I'm not going anywhere. Um, the great thing about this is you can write the class so you can insert it at certain points, you can remove some, and then like if we were going to get rid of this one in the middle, uh, essentially we would then just tell, hey, you need to now point to this one, and this one we're going to unallocate. So if you come from a scripting language like Ruby, you know, arrays are dynamic. And you don't have to do this. In fact, your arrays have classes for inserting at index or deleting at a certain point. And all that stuff's handled for you. Uh, so this is actually a pretty interesting project. And one of the good things about it is, unlike the past two, they actually allow me to do it in Ruby, which I kind of found funny because I was like, well, I don't know why I would use a linked list in Ruby, but uh, to each of their own. Um, at least, you know, this time we can code this out in Ruby. So that is actually what we're going to do with today's exercise. All right, so how we want to do this um, is, well, we'll first start off by creating uh, the new node that our value will be put into. As we can see from the initializer up here, it takes care of the next for us and even has a data value. So all we really have to do is um, create that. So we're just going to say node.new and then pass in the value. Um, which will of course go into there. Now we have our completed new object. So uh, the main thing to remember is we want to um, add this to the end of each one. This first one is going to be nil. Um, as we see here, the header itself is just going to be null. So this event, this first header is going to be null. Um, that is going to be its value. It's important to know because we want to make sure we add this to the next variable in each one of these, which puts it here. But if we call next on the initial one, then we're going to get a next not defined error um, on class nil. So uh, to avoid that, we're just going to do a quick if statement and just say, um, hey, does the head equal nil? And if it does, then we're just going to return the node as is, because that's going to be our first value, and it's going to do exactly what we want. Uh, so that takes care of our getting the list started. Now, the next thing we want to do is make sure we are adding this, these values to the end of the list. Remember, we're supposed to be getting uh, the head of the list. That's not, you know, this isn't just parent. This is the head. So every time this gets passed in, it should theoretically be this in zero. Uh, so it doesn't matter if we're on the second or the fourth, we are getting this n0 class, or this n0 object. So we want to make sure we're adding this to the end of the list. What we want to do is traverse to the end of the list until we essentially see this null value in next. As soon as we see that, we know, hey, we've arrived to the end of the list. 
and we can add this in. So the easy way to do that is first we're just going to make a copy of current uh, of uh, the head, and we're going to call it current node. And the reason why we make a copy of it is uh, because you know, once again we're going to want to return head. Um, as it is passed in because you see down here every time it does the loop it returns to the head so we don't want to actually change what head equals so we want to go ahead and create uh, just a copy of head and then we're just going to say until uh, the current node dot next is nil Then current node um, will equal current node dot next. Okay. All right. So essentially, what this does is says, "Hey, until we hit this null value in the next value, keep." going through and just keep setting current node to whatever the next node is. So we start here and we say, is this null? No. Okay, well then set our node to this node. So that says in one, jump there. Is this null? No, jump to the next one. Is that null? Yes, yes it is. And that's when you break out of the loop. Once we've broken out of the loop, we're gonna set uh, current node dot next equal to our new underscore node method and that makes sure we add node to the end of the list because now we do have the end of list uh, and then of course we're going to return that head value I don't know what's going on with the um, with the indentation here but then we're going to return this head value that we passed in that way we're always getting this in zero back every single time if we didn't if we passed current node then we'd be returning this the very last object essentially overriding everything we're doing so we're going to run that code and it does pass we get the expected output now we're going to submit it to do all the other test cases and we'll see what that does all right and there it goes we've passed all three so uh, like I said, linked lists are a very interesting thing, uh, especially doing them in Ruby just because, you know, why wouldn't I just use an array? And frankly, I don't know. Um, you know, better Rubyists out there may know why a linked list is important. Uh, otherwise, though, it's just it's good exercise. Um, but really, this is a good way to teach people about pointers. <laughs> and that's why you'll see these kind of linked list exercises. If you go through any kind of tutorial, or book for C or C++, you'll probably at some point make a linked list library um, or method that just allows you to make these kind of lists through functions like we have here. Um, but, you know, in scripting language, you may not run across that. That's why I actually thought I'd go ahead and shoot this because it seemed like a very interesting subject that, uh, especially if Ruby is your first language, you've probably never come across. Uh, and I you know, figured it'd be a good one. So anyways, um, thanks for watching. Uh, like if you like the video, dislike if you don't, and feeling anything else or recommendations, leave it in the comments. Mm -hmm.